Please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here this day, to be in the hearing of your word, to receive again the forgiveness of sins that you offer us in this life. And Lord, today now as we meditate upon your word, may that word take root inside of us, continue to grow inside of us, Lord, that in all that we are and all that we do, we may glorify you in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, this basketball thing, um, I guess I'll give up my dream about being an NBA player now. I, ever since this ball slipped out of my hand there, I, I lost my confidence. The thing that amazes me, basketball, is this week, you saw the news, LeBron James, right, left Cleveland, went and signed with the Los Angeles Lakers, a four-year contract, $153 million. Can you get by on $153 million? I just ask you, my friend. I think I could get by on maybe just a plain $150 million, right? But isn't that amazing? Why can't he draw that kind of salary? You know, you either love the guy or you hate the guy, but the guy is a good basketball player. I get amused when I watch players like LeBron and others of that level. You know, play basketball and they, you see some, maybe some rookie, right? Some rookie out there that maybe gets a block, right? From a guy like LeBron, right? Rejects him on the way to go. That rookie or river, they dance around like, yeah, got you, right? Right? Got one block on you. Yeah, I'm the top of the world. <laughs> and then LeBron will come back and score another 30 points on the guy, right? <laughs> Thing about these guys, you may reject them every now and then, but you can't deny them the kind of player they are. Life is like that, folks. We may get rejected sometimes. But as God's people, you cannot deny who we are. Jesus, the reading from Mark 6 today, lays this out for us in his own life. It reads, he went from there, went to his hometown. His disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? The people were amazed at Jesus. They were amazed at his teaching. They were amazed that he could, he could heal people, that he could raise people from the dead. They were amazed at everything that Jesus could do. They're saying, it. where did he get these things? How are these things done by his hand? And you would think, you would think with that kind of response to the things that Jesus is doing, they would be saying, come on, Jesus. Give us more. We need more in our life. But that's not what happened. Instead, what do we hear? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Instead of embracing the Son of God, embracing Jesus' message, embracing all the things that he was doing, they rejected him. That just amazes me. But Jesus tells us what's going on. He says, the prophet is not without honor, except in his own hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. He could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. You know, it gets to me that, that the people would reject him, but... Here's the deal. Jesus didn't stop what he was doing. The people may have said, Who, this, isn't this, this guy's brother? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't this all this stuff? Why should we listen to him? But Jesus did not allow them 
to stop his mission. Oh, he marveled at it. He knew what was going on. Instead, what does, it, what does the word say? He went about among the villages teaching. You could reject him. He was not going to be denied. Jesus was here for the mission. A mission that his father had given him. A mission to save you and me from our sin. And no one, no, nothing could deny him his mission. Oh, the Pharisees, they absolutely tried, didn't they, to stop his teaching? Even Peter, his own disciple, you know, tried to stop Jesus when Jesus started talking about he's going to go and he's going to go to the cross. What did Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. And Jesus would take these kinds of opportunities to teach them about what would happen if they continued to reject him and continue to deny him. In Matthew 21, in talking about the parable of the owner and his vineyard, he says they took the son... They threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what would he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruit in their season. And Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the Scriptures the stones that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And he goes on, And the one who falls on the stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. Jesus, in essence here, is, well, not just in essence, Jesus is giving a warning. If you reject me, there is judgment on the way. You will be punished. You will be thrown out of the kingdom. You will be crushed. But it didn't stop them. They continued to reject Jesus until eventually they got a, a mock trial on Good Friday, that, that evening and the morning of the next day. They got him to go before Pilate. They had him crucified on a cross. He was forsaken there by his father. And don't you know, Satan was having a field day at that moment. Satan is going, I finally got this guy. I finally rejected this guy once and for all. <laughs> you can reject him. But you can't deny him. Then comes the resurrection, the empty tomb, the victorious Jesus, the Jesus that descended into hell and proclaimed this victory over Satan and all the evil angels. This Jesus that's now living and reigning through all eternity, King of kings and Lord of lords. Jesus cannot be denied. And the good news is, folks, this is the Jesus that walks with us. This is the Jesus who is with us through this world, throughout our lives, in our times of rejection and disappointment. This is the Jesus that raises us up. I'm not, I'm not one to always look at a scripture passage and go, oh, this is the how-to book of how to do this thing. But I, I appreciate observing Jesus in this setting and seeing how he handles the rejection. Now think about how that can apply to me, how it can apply to you in our own lives. If we're rejected or if we're disappointed about something, that we cannot allow that rejection to bring us down. You and me, we're the children of God. You and me, in all of our sinful flesh, have been redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been washed clean in the waters of baptism. He has raised us up. He has made us a new creation. We are His people. And in this world, we may get rejected at times. We may be disappointed at times. And Satan will work on that and he will work on you to make you believe that you're worth nothing. He will make you believe the lie that because you're rejected, you're not worth anything to God, you're not worth anything to anybody else. And I'm telling you, don't believe the lie. I appreciate what Jesus did when he was rejected. He didn't just sit down and wring his hands and go, oh, I can't go on the mission, I can't continue on my mission. These people don't like me. I've got to stop what I'm doing. He didn't do that. You know, I, I believe in those kind of moments in life, you have two choices. One, you can sit around and sulk, or the other, by the power of God and the Holy Spirit, you can get up and go on. Growing up, I, whenever I'd get disappointed or something, something didn't go my way, I had a bad habit of sitting around my bottom lip out. You do that? 
get soaking set. Yeah. My mama should tell me, stick that dip out so far, you can trip a hog. Never been quite figured that out. But you say, you going to sit around and sulk about that? You may get rejected. We may be disappointed from time to time in our life. Things just might not go our way. But we need to be aware that Satan will try to use those times to make us think we're not worthy of anything. We're his children. We have his power in our lives. We have the Spirit of God that leads us forward as His people in this world. The reading from the Gospel of Mark continues as Jesus sends out His apostles. It says He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. It's, It's Jesus giving instruction to them about how to deal with their message as they go out with the message of Christ. And that's good for us too, right? We are the messengers of Jesus Christ in this world. And he says, if you go someplace and they accept you there, then stay there and minister and be the people of the word that I've called you to be. Be those people. Do not depart from there. Take every opportunity you have to be the gospel proclaiming people that I've made you. On the other hand, if you're rejected, then go and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony to the people that a person of the gospel was here. I love it. Somebody rejects you because you're a follower of Jesus, you don't stop and go, oh, I must be doing the wrong thing. By the Spirit of God, you get up and you walk on, you shake the dust off, and you go. Uh, they went out, proclaimed that people should repent. They cast out many demons, anointed with oil, many who were sick, and healed them. We know that uh, as they came back from re- reporting, and they, they reported about how Satan had fallen and all the amazing things they did. But you also know Jesus gave this instruction about shaking the dust off because not everybody was going to believe it and accept it. There are going to be some that are going to reject it. And the same thing is true today, my friends. It's the people of God. We will face rejection, just in general in this world, but we will also face rejection because we are followers of Jesus Christ. We are His people. You might reject, but you cannot deny the power of Jesus Christ. You cannot deny the gospel. Jesus said two things are going to happen for the end of this world. The gospel is going to be proclaimed to the ends of the earth, and also the hearts of many will grow cold. There will be those that reject but you cannot deny Jesus in the gospel. On judgment day, when Jesus comes again in all of his glory, and he judges those that have believed to eternal life and those that are unbelievers to, to hell, he cannot be denied. I've heard it said, you know, there won't be any atheists in hell. <laughs> Why? Well, they may have rejected Jesus here. They cannot deny his lordship on that day. My friends, we have the power of God in our lives. We have the message of the gospel. We have the spirit alive inside of us. As the people of God, sometimes we may be rejected. You cannot be denied. I'm going to close with these words from the Apostle Paul. You heard him in our epistle reading today. He writes, my grace, God says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, and I'm going to add here, of my rejections, of my disappointments, 
of everything that Satan would try to throw on me, I'll boast of all those things. But the power of Christ may rest upon me. Shall we pray? Lord God, when we live out our lives in this world, we face obstacles. We face times in our lives, or Lord, where we are rejected or, and, and feel like maybe we're disappointed and people may tell us things that, that we're not worthy of you or anything in this world. But Lord, you make us worthy. While this world may reject us, oh Lord, we cannot deny your grace that rests upon us, the forgiveness that you shower and pour down upon us. So we pray, Lord, give us and grant us the power of your Spirit so that when we are weak, O oh Lord, that we are strong as your people in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we continue with the prayers of the church.